Dear President, dear uh, ministers, ladies and gentlemen, it's truly a great pleasure for me to speak at uh, this International Congress on Vocational Training. I would like to start by thanking the Basque authorities for the strong leadership in developing innovative approaches to modernize vocational education and training. This conference is proof of the international interest in the pioneering work that you are doing in this region. The European Commission is very proud of having you as strategic partner in developing new approaches and initiatives to ensure that vocational education and training is fit for purpose and responsive to individuals, employers, and societal needs. As we have already heard, we are entering times in which human capital is the most important asset in making economies and societies resilient, competitive, and cohesive. I believe this should always have been the case, but it's becoming more and more clear. Vocational education and training is the sector closest to the economy and labor market. Therefore, it must pay a special attention to what happens in technology, business models, globalization, demography, or climate change. We cannot continue, continue doing business as usual. The education and training systems must be a more proactive partner in economic and social development. It must, they must create, co-create the future. A number of trends have a, a profound impact of, on skills. Rapid technological development, decarbonization, globalization and global value chains new business models, such as those based on the sharing economy, aging population and migration, they all have an impact on skills. The impact of artificial intelligence and robotization in the labor market has two competing effects that we need to consider. First, automation can directly displace workers from performing specific tasks. Two, this can also expand labor demand through efficiencies it brings to industrial production. And even when some tasks are automated, employment may not decline. Rather, workers may perform new tasks and increase overall productivity. Worker transitions adaptations and skills requirements will be significant challenges to adapt the coming age of artificial intelligence. As all jobs may disappear, we cannot predict which new jobs will appear. But this is not the key question in my view. The most important challenge is to ensure people have the skills necessary to take on different types of new activities. In my intervention, I would like to continue on three key messages. First, upskilling and reskilling is the new normal for all. Secondly, we need more relevant, responsive and innovative education and training. And thirdly, smart financing for lifelong learning. Let's come to upskilling and reskilling. Rapid changes in the, new, in the economy and society require everyone in society undergoes upskilling and reskilling on a continuous basis. Everyone means everyone. We cannot leave any individual behind. But where do we stand now? What I can tell you is that Europe at this point is not using the full potential of its human capital. 
In Europe, we have more than 61 million adults that are without upper secondary level of education. They are often unemployed or inactive and at risk of poverty and social exclusion. At the same time, and this is the paradox, they are the least likely to access formal or non-formal training that could help them improve uh, their status. The commissioner mentioned in her video uh, the Upskilling Pathways initiative that is designed precisely to help member states putting in place systematic and coherent upskilling and reskilling for low-skilled adults. But it's not only about low-skilled adults. It is also about the young people that leave initial education and training without either a vocational education and training or higher education qualifications. And it is about all the people that are on the labor market that will have to go through different transitions from jobs to jobs and will need to upskill and reskill during her career, their career. Secondly, my, I, the point about education and training. Education and training needs to be focused on what are the real needs. Skills intelligence, graduate tracking systems, and guidance services are particularly important in this regard. Skills intelligence is a crucial building block to inform policy making and planning of education and training provision in a fast moving labor market with multiple transitions. We need to combine long term economic forecasting of skills with real time skills and labor market analysis by using innovative digital techniques such as big data. Our European Agency for Vocational Education and Training, CEDEFOP, is the front runner of such surveys in the EU. One of the findings of CEDEFOP skills forecast for the period 2016 to 2030 is that replacement of retiring worker, workers will account for 91% of all job openings in the European economy, with nearly half of them requiring a vocational qualification. It is clear that plays a crucial role in inducing skills mismatches and shortages through supply of technical and professional skills. While around 50% of young people in the EU acquire a VET qualification, VET systems in most EU countries face numerous challenges. In many member states, there is a persistent lack of vocational education, um, persistent lack, sorry, of attractiveness of vocational education and training, partly due to popular misconception about this type of education and training, but also partly due to real gaps in the quality and labor market relevance of vocational education and training. Many countries are struggling to set the right combination of technical, digital ba basic and transversal skills that VET learners should acquire for the future world of work. work based learning is still not accessible to the majority of VET learners in Europe. Vocational education and training has an important role in contributing to innovation processes. In particular, there is a great potential for innovation, diffusion processes, supporting SMEs to adopt innovative technologies and work practices as well as strengthening the innovation absorption capacity of firms in ensuring a high level of technical skills of their employees. To enhance this innovation diffusion support function of vocational education and training, the European Commission has launched an initiative to set up 
centers of vocational excellence across Europe. This initiative defines a bottom-up approach to excellence, where vocational education and training institutions are capable of rapidly adapting skills provision to evolving local needs. They operate in a given local context, closely embedded in the local innovation ecosystems, while cooperating with centers in other countries. And my colleague will uh, give you more detail on this concept later on today. The innovation capacity of higher education institutions needs also to be strengthened. Many of these institutions are developing new solutions to economic, social and environmental problems, all driven by innovation. To close Europe's innovation gap, all higher education institutions' activities, including teaching and research, should become more closely connected with institutions all over the world and fostering a culture that is characterized by innovation and entrepreneurship. And I'm my, coming to my third point, the point about smart financing for lifelong learning. Lack of financing, contrary to what one would believe, is not often not the biggest barrier in engaging in learning. Nevertheless, in the future we will need to be more efficient with the resources we have and find new and more smart ways of financing the new imperative of upskilling and reskilling. To encourage individuals to engage in education and training, several member states of the European Union have experimented with different forms of financial incentives. One interesting example we are currently looking at is the one of the so-called individual learning accounts. These accounts are an incentive scheme that provides individuals with the resources to take up training on their own initiative and makes training rights portable from job to job. This type of um, individual learning accounts can help to preserve people's employability by encouraging to take up proactively and preventively uh, training to prepare for future changes. The French uh, individual learning account that was launched in 2015, it's still it's in, in, in its infancy, but is generally seen as a, the most comprehensive and promising approach in Europe. Other examples include tax incentives for education and skills development by the private sector, usually designed in the form of reductions to employee say, social security contributions, tax credits or deductions under the personal income tax system. Many member states also allow companies to deduct training expenses under the corporate income tax system. In addition, some member states apply employer social security contribution reductions or corporate tax incentives for apprentices. Financial incentives are important, but they are not sufficient to build the learning culture we need in Europe. We need to give also people the income security during their career transitions. And with rapid change, there will be more and more career transitions during one's uh, working life. If we don't give this income security during career transitions, the inequality will only grow, eventually leading to underinvestment in human capital, especially for the least well-off. In conclusion, let me highlight a few aspects of how the European Union is uh, supporting uh, these new developments. The proposed uh, new European Union budget for 2021-2027 has made investing in people a key priority. 
programs such as the European Structural and Investment Funds, of which the European Social Fund is an important uh, fund, Horizon Europe, Digital Europe, Creative Europe, and InvestEU aim at nurturing and valorizing the talent of everyone in the European Union and enhancing social cohesion and inclusiveness. By introducing a specific chapter on human capital in the EU budget, the Union has clearly set its priorities. And for this purpose, it has proposed, the Commission has proposed to double the budget of Erasmus to some 30 million. The new European Social Fund will have um, 101 billion as proposed by the European Commission. And if so, will continue to be the most important source of EU funding for human capital. At the same time, the proposed budget wants also to address emerging needs. And it's for this reason that the Commission has proposed a new program specifically to foster the digital dimension in the European Union. The proposed Digital Europe program will have a total budget of 9 billion for the period 21 to 27. And finally, the new Invest EU program, the program that is taking over from the so called Juncker Plan or European Fund for Strategic Investment, will have a specific window dedicated to social and skills. Through this window, it will uh, po be possible to promote innovative education and training services, skills forecasting, skills assessment and validation services, or services helping to match the demand for and supply of skills, as well as the education business partnerships and centers of excellence. I am convinced that joining forces in the field of education and training is more important than ever, which should strive for the best education and training in the world. And we can only do it if we are willing to share our knowledge and experience, if we trust each other, if we understand each other better, we will be more willing to cooperate and share our collective wisdom for the benefit of current and future generations. This is also a reason why our proposal for the next Erasmus program that will take over as of from 2021 will have an international dimension for vocational education and training. For the first time, the EU will be funding mobility of vocational education and training learners and staff anywhere in the world. I wish you a very successful Congress. Thank you very much for your attention.